Hey, what's up guys? Today we're gonna look at the 2012 Kia Soul cruise control buttons. On my Kia Soul, the uh, set button does not work. Today we're gonna take a deep dive and get those buttons working. Let's do it. All right, let's run this down about what tools we're gonna need to complete this job. The main tool that we're gonna need to get off the steering wheel is a T40 uh, Torx bit or Allen wrench and that's gonna help us take off the airbag. Once we take off the airbag, then we're gonna need a, a 22 millimeter uh, socket with uh, some type of long, you know, it can be a breaker bar, but you really don't need that much torque. Uh, you could probably do it with a regular socket wrench. And then uh, when you turn it, it wants to turn the steering wheel also. So you can either just hold the steering wheel or you can activate the steering wheel lock and then torque against that. And then after you have the steering wheel off, uh, you want to just use a regular Phillips screwdriver. Here's what my steering wheel looks like. And I wanted to show you the access panels on the side. Okay, one thing I wanted to uh, talk about was how I got the airbag off. I loosened the two screws on the side, the two Torx bit screws on the side, and then I couldn't get the steering wheel out. I couldn't really hold on to it. So what I did was I just gave it a, I gave it a tap, and then because the horn is spring-loaded, the uh, airbag mechanism just came out. I was able to grab the entire mechanism out, and that gave me access to the steering wheel bolt. All right, let's do this. First, we're going to disconnect the, the yellow parts of the wiring harness. Once that's popped up, the rest of the harness can just pop right out. Now, I also disconnected the, uh, the plastic wire stay here, wire clamp. So that just pops out. We can get it out of the way. And let's see here. Okay, now I'm going to disconnect the steering wheel. This is a 22 millimeter, and I have it on my my breaker bar. So this doesn't require too much torque. Now it's very important that you put your steering wheel first in a position that you know is straight. So you, there's no um, like exact spline position that it will allow you to put it in. It'll basically it'll allow you to put it in crooked. Here my steering wheel is straight. There's a little dot on the top of the steering wheel right above the shaft. And um, I'm gonna align that with uh, some scratches I put in onto the shaft. So when putting the steering wheel in, I'm gonna make sure everything's lined up so that it drives straight. All right, let's give this thing a shove. I'm just gonna wiggle it side by side and you can see it's already coming off. Okay, I do need to disconnect the white wire harness okay this is our clock spring it's really important that we don't spool this in any direction like we could turn it a little bit this way turn it a little bit that way but make sure that overall it stays in the same position because if we turn it 180 degrees or actually 360 degrees and the wires inside uh, are sort of favored in one direction versus the other, then we're gonna wear out those, those wires real quick and then we'll have to replace our clock spring. So just keep this in the general position of upward and uh, we shouldn't have a problem. Now we have six screws, two on the bottom, two here, and then one on each side, and that will take off the back cover. Back cover is coming off. Okay, so now we just have to take off this wire harness, remove this screw, and then our cruise control buttons will come out. If I hit the on button, 
it's working. I can see the light on the dash, but when I go to hit set, it's not working. Of course, I have the, the circuit apart right now, so it's not gonna it's not gonna work. Now, when you take out the circuit card, here's what you see. These pins are numbered. You can see the numbers in here, probably not on camera very well, but I believe number one is on the bottom and then it goes up to number eight. You can check the resistance on these uh, terminals here and then check to see if the buttons work. All right, I apologize for the bad image. This is actually coming from a Google search and this is uh, on my computer. Um, so this is an image of a 2011 Kia Forte cruise control circuit. And but it's I found out that it's exactly like our Kia Soul. We have on the bottom here terminal 6, 7 and 8. And on the side we have 1 and 2. And then up here we're going to be looking for these resistors on our multimeter. 3.9k. This is 910 ohms and 220 ohms here. So and we're gonna see those after we hit these buttons. And we can even test these light bulbs a little bit. I uh, connected it to the wrong terminals at first and then unexpectedly these LEDs uh, lit up. So, and I'll show you that. If I go to the bottom, starting on pins one and two, the LEDs light up. I don't know if you can see that. So they're glowing red. So that told me that those pins are one and two. And uh, those are good for the LEDs, but I wanted to test the buttons because my cruise control isn't working. The first uh, circuit that we're going to be checking is the main switch for the cruise control, basically the on and off button. And if you look down here, it says 200 ohms. We can't check a 3.9k ohm resistor on the 200 ohm range. So we have to increase it to 200k on, for this meter. Now we can check the 3.9k ohm resistor in our circuit. Now our meter should say 3.9. There we go. So that's our main cruise control on off switch. Now I'm gonna to change to terminals seven and six. Basically I'm just gonna shift down one. I'm gonna hit the cancel button. It should be a short. There we go. So cancel is working. Now I'm going to hit the reset button and it should be 910. So if I change ranges on my meter, it, it'll give me more resolution and it'll say like 900. So basically that's 0.9 K ohms. Same thing as 900 ohms. So that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to hit the set button. And it's making a fool out of me because just a minute ago, it did not work. So I hit this thing like a hundred times and it didn't work and now it's working. All right, so now it appears that it's not working. I'm looking for 220 ohms. So the set button is intermittent and maybe worth it just to replace the entire assembly. But this is good for me because now I know this is the actual problem. I don't have to, you know, take it to the dealer, spend a hundred dollars just for a diagnostic. I've got it right here with my meter. Okay. So let's try to pry this up. Now the switches go bad all the time. So generally, components in the circuits don't wear out it's usually just a, uh, a bad connection 
All right, so the plastic, the black plastic comes off. We can just move that aside. Now the part that gives it its spring or its bounce is this little blue plastic thing here. Kind of looks like a little nipple from a baby bottle. We'll just set that aside. And the actual button is right here. So this is the metal. And you gotta be careful, you gotta, you gotta know which side is up and down. Now there's a center piece to this and it's slightly raised and that is, so that tells me that it's in the up position. So when you hit the button, which is this blue thing, it pushes down in the center, pushes down on the center of this metal thing and it's that's gonna hit your button. So if it's upside down, the center of this metal piece is gonna be lower than the rest of it. So that's gonna be in the wrong position. Now to fix this, all we really need to do is clean it. So there's two types of cleaning. There's usually a, like a physical cleaning process and a chemical cleaning process. What I would use is a, an eraser. So erasers are slightly abrasive and uh, this is what we used in the Air Force when cleaning a circuit. So let's give it a shot. Oh, and the, uh, the other process for cleaning something is chemical. Typically, you want to physically clean something before attempting to chemically clean it. And that's what we're doing here. We're going to try to clean it with the eraser. The only problem is, though, that I can't put this eraser in my switch so um, yeah I'm not gonna do that so I'll just switch I'll clean one side chemically and clean the other side physically and chemically hopefully we'll put this together test it out and we'll get 220 ohms well you can see already this metal is already shinier than, than what it was just a few minutes ago Okay, and now to chemically clean it, I have some isopropyl alcohol just from uh, the bathroom. No special chemicals here. Of course, you can get commercial grade and get all picky if you want to, but I don't think it's necessary. So here's a Q-tip. Try to clean this. A little over, overkill here. This thing is so small. Okay, so now I'm going to try to clean the other side. There's not much I can do here. I can try to physically clean it to kind of scratch anything off. If there is anything, go back with my, my Q-tip, try to clean it again. All right, hopefully that's good enough. Before I assemble this button any further, uh, I'm going to go ahead and test the circuit again, let's see if it works. So again, let's see, I'm looking for 220 ohms, I'll put my, I'm going to put my meter on 2K ohms, alright, I'm getting my meter over here, push this aside, there's my meter. Let's see what happens here. I'm going to push the button. Well, there's the 220 ohms we're looking for. Two, 
220. Let's try to put back the switch assembly the best we can here. There's that little nipple looking thing. That needs to go right in the middle. With most circuits in cars, whether it's a sensor or a switch or something like that, most of the time it's just a dirty contact. Like I was saying before, a lot of the components, they last forever. Um, but the, where they fail is on the, on the contacts because every time you, every time a button is pressed and then there's a little bit of arcing in there or sometimes corrosion gets in there. And so it just doesn't work anymore at the contacts. So if you can take it apart and clean it, then you can probably fix your circuit. There we go. Now my switch is moving freely, springing back. All right, let's test this thing, huh? Oops. 220 ohms. Off. 220 ohms. Off. That's exactly what we want, guys. So we just fixed our cruise control for free with an eraser and a little bit of alcohol and a Q-tip and some common tools. We just fixed our cruise control. Saved 50 bucks, had a little bit of fun doing it, made a video and helped others. So now we just got to put everything back together and hopefully we won't break it. We got the back panel on. Don't forget this uh, switch connector back here. Probably should have done that a couple minutes ago, right? Yeah, the wires for our airbag come through the top hole. And again, I'm gonna align. Hopefully that's right. If it's not perfect, I could always uh, gain access to this and move it over a notch or two. That's it. A little bit of torque there. All right, I've got this electrical connector here. Into the airbag clock up there. All right. Electrically, we're all there except for the airbag. Now remember, I do have my battery disconnected, so I'm not too scared of it. And here we have the black terminal goes to the black terminal. And so they just plug straight in there. Okay, this one goes in here. Clamp down those wires, like so. And after the wires are in place, you have to push down the yellow. All right, we're all set. So now the airbag drops in. And we have two screws on each side holding it in place. All right, guys, we're on the road. So here we go. Button is on. Cruise is on on my dash. Let's hit set. There it is. Set works. Maintaining its speed of 40 miles an hour. Cruise control works. I'm gonna hit the brakes here. Cruise control goes off. I just cleaned the switch using alcohol and an eraser. 
save myself 50 bucks. All right, let's try this again. Cruise control is on. We're gonna hit set. It's working. I'm gonna hit cancel. Now it's off. I'm gonna hit set. It's on. Hit cancel. Hit resume. And it's on. All right, guys, everything works. I'm stoked. And uh, now it's time to just go for a mountain biking ride. I got my bike already in the back. Let's go.